So, welcome back to my channel. So today's Swedish word of the day is chicken bone. Chicken bone. Which is a Swedish chickling bean. Chickling bean. So Stiggy has been spoiled. I had a vacation for one week. My boyfriend had a vacation for four weeks. So Stiggy hasn't been alone that much. Now his fairy tale is over. So I'm spoiling him today because he's a little bit sad not having Nicholas here. So Nicholas is the favorite if you didn't know. So yeah. Today I'm gonna do a little makeup and murder video. This is where I sit down, do my makeup, and I talk about a true crime case. So if you are up with that, then great. This is the case of the Swedish Dating League. We are going to start off talking about Felicia. Felicia is 18 years at the time and she has been abusing drugs for three years. She has also been homeless for these three years, but now she is staying with her boyfriend. She doesn't live with her boyfriend, but since she is homeless, it's kind of natural for her to stay there. However, Felicia is in the crap hole right now. <laughs> That's not the way to say it. I don't know if it was her or, you know, I don't really know the details of this, but her boyfriend was in custody due to the fact that he had done something to Felicia. I don't really know what it was, but he was in custody. So naturally Felicia has nowhere to go and she doesn't have any access to any money. So it's not like she can check into a hotel like super bougie and be like, hey, here I am, pretty woman style. But Felicia is very, very lucky. She is friends with a girl called Tove. Tove is 15 years old. You do want to remember this person as well. She is living with her parents at the time. She's like 15 and she's also abusing drugs naturally. It must be really, really hard being a drug addict and not having any money. If you hear something, it's this little guy. He's going bananas on his chicken bone. Felicia and Tove, they had a friend, a, a guy friend, and I don't really know what this guy friend was called, but we can make up a name. It's not really that important, but let's just say his name is Edgar. I like the name Edgar. Edgar has a little side business. He goes on a website and then he um, talks to women and guys and sees if anyone wants to buy sex from him. Like, you know, a normal person. This is basically a scam. He scams them. So when they do meet up, he's like, hey, he always has a friend with him. So sometimes Felicia was with him and was the friend that he brought. When he meets this woman or guy, he says to them that he wants the money up front and they are like, fine. And then he says, I'm just going to go ahead and give the money to my friend over there because I owe her money and she wants them now. And they, they are like, yeah, 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 sure. Whatever. Give them to it. I'll just stay right here. This is just like a few meters away. So it's not like, hey, I'm going to go right over there. So they're always fine with it. So he goes to Felicia and he gives her the money. Then he goes back to the person that he was meeting that was going to buy sex from him. And he says, there, all done. By the way, quick stop. I'm just gonna go and buy some cigarettes and then we can go and have our little fun time. So when he goes to buy his cigarettes, he leaves. By the way, just a little quickie quickie. I'm using my Polina palette available for purchase right now. So now you kind of understand how this works. They meet up with someone and then they trick them. They know that these people aren't going to go to the police because in Sweden, it's not illegal to be a prostitute, but it is illegal to buy sex. <laughs> makes sense, right? So they obviously know that they are not gonna go to the police and like, oh my God, they robbed me of 2000 Swedish crones, which is maybe around like $250. Uh, yeah, okay, it's uh, actually around 211, $212. So Edgar ends up showing them, I just love the name Edgar. So Edgar shows the girls the website that he uses and the girls are like, you know, Felicia has nowhere to go. She has nowhere to live. So she's like, maybe 
we should try this. I mean, we're not gonna have sex. We're just gonna trick these guys into thinking that we're gonna have sex with them. It's like easy money and then we can go ahead and buy drugs and shit. So they start doing this and they start fooling a lot of these guys and everything is running smoothly. They're having a nice time and they don't have to have sex with these guys. They kind of just trick them. And I mean, I have thoughts about this. Like, I feel like, you know, some of the men that they met were like old, like really old. So to me, I'm kind of like, I don't really care that they fool these guys. I mean, yeah, it's a shitty thing, but still like you shouldn't buy if you're like 60, you shouldn't buy sex from someone that's 15. Uh-uh, honey. So eventually these girls get caught and I actually don't 100% sure why they got caught. If it was because of the fact that the police kind of knew that they were uh, fooling guys or whatever. It's honestly, it's not really said. Anyway, they do end up getting caught and the police makes them take a urine sample because they want to see if they have drugs in their system, which they do. They have cannabis in their system and I mean, when they said that these girls were like drug addicts, I was like, did they take cannabis? It's that, I mean, it's not like they were taking heroin. I don't, I don't know. Cannabis is illegal in Sweden, so, I mean, it is illegal, so they got caught. Nothing really happened, but to this family or her par pa parents, her parents, her parents, got mad and they told Felicia that she was not allowed to live there anymore because they needed to focus on their daughter and they needed to put her in first place and they needed to take care of her. They kind of realized that, okay, it's time to go in with the heavy gloves, take care of our daughter and kind of be a little bit more protective than we have been in the past because obviously she needs it. So Felicia was like, of course she was bummed out, but she kind of understood. But now she has nowhere to go. Tove is starting to freak out. As I said, she had also taken drugs for a, quite a while and her family knew that she had been taking drugs. So she had been in rehab as well. And she got something, I don't feel the need to explain this, but it was kind of like, if she gets caught one more time, she's, she's gonna need to go to rehab. So she was scared because this girl doesn't want to give up her drugs. So what's the next best thing to do? Well, it's to pack a fucking suitcase and leave. Get out of there. This is abuse. Her parents is abusing her. She's like, no, I don't want to stay here anymore because then you won't allow me to take any drugs. So they were like, get the fuck out of there. I shouldn't drink energy drinks when doing these videos because it gets super sped up and like super, my mood gets really silly. <laughs> I just kind of have to say this, but I forgot to say what kind of date everything has been and a year. But when I watch these videos, I hear people saying dates and years and I never put that shit on my mind. I kind of just listen to the story. The dates doesn't really matter, except if it's like a timeline, but then you kind of know if it's a day later or so on. But this was in 2013 and I think the girls was caught on September 1st. So, because on September 1st, in a way, it is when they kind of pack their bag and s decides that we need to leave. So the girls end up leaving, but now they have another problem. They have nowhere to go. Luckily for them, they have a guy friend who calls them. This guy is called Akke and he is 26 years old. So they decide that they are gonna meet up and they go to Akke's apartment. When they come to his apartment, he realized that they are ba carrying a huge bag. Oh, I forgot to say, Aki lives with his friend Rocky, who is 25 years old, Aki is 26 years old. And you wanna keep these people in mind. So all of these four people are now like, remember them, okay? So as I said, they end up seeing this huge bag and they're like, why are you carrying a huge bag. The girls end up telling the guys everything. And I mean everything about like their scams and you know, all of it. And the guys are like, hmm, easy money you say? Well, we want in. Also, Aki tells the girls that, you know, you're allowed to stay at my place tonight. And they're like, oh, thank you. It's unsure like why the guys wanted in on this. Like, I mean, Aki, he had a job and everything. He worked at a kindergarten. 
that was very close by to his apartment. It's I don't really know what Rocky did, but Rocky actually said that he wanted in on it because he was like, what if a dude grabs you and pull pull you guys into their van? I mean, then you're not gonna be safe anymore. But I mean, I think that they just wanted in for the easy cash. The next day, the girls are gonna meet a guy called Jimmy. Jimmy is 45 years old. He says that he was actually only gonna buy the girls dinner and a movie and I mean that is just like mm hmm you were not going to Jimmy darling you were not uh-uh you wanted to get laid so these people aren't really that clever because they didn't really have a plan so as I said the next day this is on September 2nd they are gonna meet up Jimmy and Felicia is the one who meets up with him but kind of immediately when he, she meets up with him she's like she just turns away and leaves and then the guy comes up and it's like what are you doing with my sister gosh I was thinking about Ross get off my sister <laughs> So both of the guys, both Rocky and Ake, grabs him. They are trying to get him to get down on his knees and it gets pretty physical. And then Ake pulls up a knife. This Jimmy guy, Jimmy Darling, he's like very, very scared right now. And you know, you never really know with people. So he does the correct thing. He just takes out all of his money and then he throws it on the ground and he just says like, Let's just forget about this. Do the same thing. If you're ever in a situation where someone wants to take all of your money, don't even try to protect your money. Don't even worry about the bills that you have to pay. Like if you have to pay rent tomorrow, fuck it. Leave the money, give them whatever they want. Do they want your phone? Give it to them. Do they want your hair? Cut it off and give it to them. Like give them everything you, you have, except for your makeup. That's more important because otherwise you will get killed, I'll tell you that. So he did the correct thing. Ake is telling him like he's a pedophile, his act, like he's disgusting and that this is his little sister. She's like 14 years old. Ake doesn't remember pulling out a knife, eh, but he doesn't like deny it either. He just says that it's, it's very uncommon for him to actually wear a knife. So he was like, oh, that's a little bit suspicious. But yeah, maybe I did. Maybe I did. They had actually taken drugs. So both of the guys got pretty physical because of the fact that they had been taking drugs. And then Aki actually got a blackout. So he's not usually a very physical guy. He's usually kind of a sweetheart. According to what people said, he had no previous record or anything. So this was very, very strange to everyone, but they were like, okay, whatever. He just took drugs and that's that, you know, no, no biggie. The next day they are gonna do the same thing. They have a victim. So let's just call this guy Yu Wan. They are gonna meet up Yu Wan and Yu Wan is 28 years old. I don't remember what this guy's name was. I'm so sorry. I uh, usually write that down. I usually write everything down, but this time I thought that I would freestyle it a little bit more. So let me know if you thought that this case would, was better than my previous case that I told them a little bit better, if it's just like the same or if it was just worse, whatever. This time around, the girls decided that no, we wanna do this ourselves because it has never gotten physical when, the, when it was just the girls. But the time when they added or added, but now that they, uh, brought the guys it got physical and it got out of hand and the girls just didn't want that so they were like let's just do this ourselves this was two days later so this was on september 4th so they were gonna meet up a guy called you as i said and he was 28 years old they had decided they that they were gonna have sex in the forest you guys already know this that the girls was just trying to scam him of his money but still that was what was said they are meeting up with this guy and he gives them 2,000 Swedish crowns. So once again, he gives them $212. And the girls tell the guy like, oh my God, we forgot our blanket. We don't want to put our tushy to <laughs> the ground. So we're just going to go home and get a blanket. And the guy's like, yeah, okay, I'll just wait here. And they were communicating on the app kick which i have all my life thought was called kick not joking so the girls just turn around and they are walking home to get a blanket of course they don't do that you one keeps on test texting the girls and through this kick he can see that they are reading but they are not responding so he's like 
mm, what am I supposed to do? So he's like super clever. He's like, hey, you wanna get a, another key? Or another hundred dollars? And the girls are like, hmm, maybe we should do that. So this is when the guys get involved. I don't really know how they got involved, but I think that they kind of called the girls and they were like, what are you doing? And they uh, told them what they were up to and they wanted in again. The girls was like, no, we don't want you to be a part of this. Like, you know, leave. So Felicia and Tuva had planned that Felicia was going to meet up with the guy, Yuan. She was going to take the money and they were gonna stand there and wait for Tuve. Tove was going to be at home fixing the blanket and everything, but then Felicia would get worried and say like, I don't know what's taking her so long. I'm just gonna run home and get her. That was the plan and that was how they were kind of gonna get away. Now, this plan was not put into motion because the guys was already heading towards Felicia. Rocky and Ake, they are walking and they are walking right next to each other. But then eventually Ake walks a little bit faster than Rocky. Rocky doesn't see Ake anymore. And then when he gets to the place or where they are located, he sees that Ake is holding like a choke. He's choking this guy and Felicia is standing there like, Give us the money! If you're not gonna give us the money, Aki is gonna fucking kill you! You know, whatever. It's just like brutal. Aki is screaming to this guy like, what the fuck are you doing? She's 14 fucking years old, which isn't even true. And then he kind of slaps the guy all over, just continues to slap this guy. Aki says like, if I had a knife, I would cut your dick off and I would kill you. So what they do is that they take this guy's uh, ATM, ATM card and then they take his phone. Then Felicia goes to the ATM and leaves you one with the guys. She goes to the ATM and he has provided them with his code. She takes out money and then she calls the guys and says like, yes, this was the code. Because they were scared that he, maybe he gave them the wrong code. And then they let him go. I think he actually pressed charges against them. And I don't really know what happened to that. And I don't really know if he ever got something for trying to buy sex. So now one of the guys, Rocky, feels like, you know what? This has been spiraling out of control. And... I don't want to do this again. I'm done. The problem was that the girls ha ha bleh. the problem was that the girls had already uh, started taking contact with a guy and they had already planned to meet the following day. So, you know, let's just do it again, I guess. So, the following day, which is on September 5th, the girls have planned to meet a 31-year-old guy that was called Mansur. I'm so sorry if I pronounced that wrong. They had planned to meet him and they had said that we're gonna do like we have done before, that the guys are gonna come up and then kind of claim that these are their sisters. It had worked so wonderfully in the previous day, so why not? They met up at nighttime on September 5th and the girls met him and this is so unclear. One of the guys says that they were sitting on the park bench and when the girls passed, they were going to and um, like, hey, what a coincidence. That's my sister. What are you doing? Get out of here. But one of the guys says, this was Rocky who said it, but the other guy, Ake, came up to the three. So to Mansour, uh, Mansour, Mansour, and the two girls. Monsieur, Mansour, uh, he's a little bit suspicious at this point. He sees Ake coming up to him and to the girls and he's like, what is this? Is this a setup? He gets mad. He gets a little bit unsure as well. Like here he is, he's been planning to meet up with these two girls and then suddenly a guy comes up, like he gets mad. So when Aki walks up to him, he hits him and this huge fight breaks out of the, between the two. So Rocky goes between the guys and he tries to break the fight up because he's not having it, he doesn't, he didn't want to be there in the first place and he didn't want to like he didn't want it to break up into a fight again. 
So he tries to get between them, but what happens is that everyone falls to the ground and it's just a mess, you guys. It's just a mess. Like Akke says that he was kicking Mansoor. He was hitting him. Mansoor never kicked, but he hit pretty hard. While they are on the ground, Felicia actually gets into Monsieur's pants and she can take out the money that he had brought. And previously, when they had been fighting, they had taken drugs. This time, Ake, he hadn't taken any drugs. The only thing he had done was to take a joint during the day, but he hadn't like taken anything else that he usually did. Eventually, Monsieur says, you know, stop it, stop it. I have a bad heart. And this is when everyone is like, you know what, let's just let this one go. Everyone was kind of tired of this and they didn't want to fight in it or anything. So they were like, you know, enough is enough. Let's just leave it as it is. So when Monsieur said that he had a bad heart, they all left. They let him go, they got up, they didn't fight again. Uh, Rocky and the girls actually said that there was another fight that broke out between Aki and Monsieur, and then he said, I have a bad heart. So I personally, I'm just using the viewfinder as a mirror, but I personally don't really know what actually happened. You know, only the people that was there know that. They are not far away from the scene of the crime or the place where they fought. When Rocky realized that, shit, where's my cap? So he goes back to the place to look for his cap. He doesn't see a lot and he doesn't see his cap, but what he does see is Monsieur who's leaning against a tree and he's like, you know, I don't want to be here when he's here. It's a little bit uncomfortable. So he left and thought, you know, I'm just going to go back tomorrow instead. It's no biggie. So they go home. Everyone is sleeping at Ake's apartment. So the following day, Ake is going to work. As I said, he was working nearby at a kindergarten. The girls are home sleeping and then Rocky wakes up and he's like, damn, I want my cap. Where is it? I'm gonna go and look for it because this cap was worth looking for. So he goes back to the scene of the crime or, you know, where the fight took place and he ends up finding some items. But the most strange thing he finds is Monsieur. And Monsieur is dead. So the other things that Rocky found was his car keys, Monsieur's rock, uh, car keys. Uh, he also found his jacket, Monsieur's jacket. He found his cap, obviously, Monsieur's phone. Uh, so what he does is that he, and then lastly, he found the dead body. So what he does is that he calls Ake, and as I said, Ake is at work. And when he calls him, he's like, I don't know what to do. Um, I found Monsignor, Monsieur, dead. He's laying here, he's dead. Ake is like, he can't really understand what Rocky is saying. Like, I guess that it's kind of hard. Like, what? What do you mean? So he's like, you know, I can't talk right now, but he ends up calling Rocky back in two minutes. And it's like, what the F are you saying? Like, how did this happen? So Rocky goes back to the apartment. He wakes up the girls and tell them. And then uh, Aki comes home from work. He leaves work early and they are in shock. Everyone, but especially Aki, because, because he knows that this is my fault. He thinks that he, Either he died because of his bad heart or he died because of the fact that he beat him to death. Everyone said that he was so shaken up about this, like it was just horrible. He felt awful. He felt guilty because he killed this poor guy. Even though that they had been in a brutal fight the day previously, that didn't mean that he wanted this guy to die. So he was just like, I need to see him. I can't really understand it and I need to see him. You know, sometimes you're like, no, I, I don't believe you. This person isn't dead. If you have ever gotten like a death when someone has told you that um, a person has died. I remember when a couple of years ago, one of my friends actually died. She had a heart failure, uh, but it was this huge thing. Everyone thought that she had been murdered. It was saying that in the press and everything. And when we heard it, it we were like, 
no, that can't be right. No, she's not dead. No, it's just like this thing. So what they did was that Rocky and Aki went back to the scene of the crime so that he could see the body. And yeah, sure enough, he was laying there dead. He couldn't see the face of him, but he was laying with his face down. So the guys get back to the apartment and everyone, as I said, says that Aki was destroyed. And Aki says, if we get caught, I'll take the blame. It was my fault. I was the one who killed him, but he didn't want to go to the police. He was like, I, I, I just, I can't do it. Rocky wanted to call the police. It's said anyway that he wanted to call the police. We don't know if this is true uh, because as I said, these are four different people. Everyone has their version. It's hard to know what is true if you, was, if you weren't there. But nonetheless, apparently, According to Rocky, Aki said that he didn't want him to call the police, so he didn't. But remember, I mean, Rocky was 25 years old. He could have called if he wanted to. He could have called anonymously and just said there's a dead body there, but he didn't. So what did Monsieur die of? Well, <laughs> I'll tell you. The day before, when Rocky went back to get his cap, he saw Monsieur leaning against a tree that was probably his last steps and then he probably fell down and, and died it is assumed that way and it is the highest possibility what did he die of well he had been stabbed 18 times he had been stabbed in his fingers in his hands in his arms in his back in his stomach in his legs like he had been stabbed all over. So you might ask yourself, stabbed? What happened? This is where it gets not tricky, but it's word against word. So the friends claims that uh, Aki was the one who stabbed him. Aki says that no, I didn't stab him, but he has no explanation to why he's stabbed. He knows that his friends didn't do it. He never blames his friends. He says, no, they were not the one who stabbed him. But every time I'm gonna talk about a knife, just know that Aki denies this, and this is Felicia's story and Rocky's and Tuve's story. So anyway, when I said that Rocky went back to the scene of the crime to find his cap, he also found the knife. And when they have been to the scene of the crime, Rocky and Ake, they go back to the apartment and Ake is so sad. He's like destroyed. Rocky tries to calm him down and say, you know, it's not your fault. You didn't, you didn't cut him that deep. I'm sorry, it's not funny, but I mean, when I read that, I was like, what? And Aki said, yes, I did. I did cut him that deep. So they sit in the apartment and Rocky eventually says that it's not good for us to sit in the apartment and just stare at the wall and be sad. It's better for us to go outside and to take a walk and try to think about something else. He mainly said this because of Aki. He saw that Aki wasn't feeling good, but then they also wanted to get rid of all of the evidence that they had collected, like the knife and the phone and you know, whatever, like the things that they had collected. So they go out and they go to a lake and th this is where they dump the phone and the knife. Again, Aki still denies that he saw anyone throw in a knife. He has no idea who threw it in. He has never seen it. All of the other people knows about a knife and I will say say that I listened to the guy and I found him to be very credible. I found him to be uh, honest. I know that when I'm telling when I'm telling this story, it might not sound like he's that honest and trustworthy, but I actually felt that he was very very trustworthy. Anyway, this is when they trash everything and then a couple of days later, they also have Tove had actually found Monsieur's car keys. The murder happened on a Thursday. Two days later, so this is on a Saturday, Aki wants to see the car because they kept the car keys. So Felicia is holding the car keys and then they walk to Monsieur's car. And this is when they don't actually walk up to the car because they see that there's a lot of people around this car, not policemen or anything, but there are people there. So they're like, no, 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 no not a good thing to just walk up to the car right now when there's people there. So they just sit down on the ground. 
So the people that's around surrounding this car is actually Monsieur's friends. His friends had tried to get in contact with him the day after he died. He didn't pick up and they thought that this was very strange because he always had his phone on him. There was no messages or anything coming through. But then on the Saturday they got worried and they contacted Monsieur's dad that gave them permission to go into his apartment. So he basically gave them the keys and said, you know, go ham try and find him. I want to say that the, his friends was actually pretty smart because they went on the computer to see his web history and there they could see that he had been chatting with these two girls and that they were gonna meet up. So they were like, ah, oh, this doesn't look good. So of course they end up driving to this place and they found find his car again they are like this is not good so monsieur's friends actually walk up to felicia and Ake, obviously not really knowing who they are and they ask if they have seen monsignor or monsieur i always want to say monsignor i'm so sorry and they look at the picture and they're like no no doesn't ring a bell haven't seen anything and then they walk up and leave. The friends had actually reported him missing already, but the police said like, you know, it hasn't really gone enough times and he's an adult, so we can't really do anything about it. And then when they found the car, they t told the police this and the police was like, well, you're allowed to take the car if you want to. They were obviously not happy with this response. The friends ends up leaving and then they come back the next day. So they start asking around near this place and seeing if you know, anyone has seen him or heard anything strange the past couple of days or seen anything strange and they get in contact with a lady. She's actually standing on the balcony and she's like, hey, I've seen something strange. So she has a dog and when she was out walking with her dog in the forest, the dog had a pretty strong reaction. So it kind of, I don't know, but alerted to a certain place, but she kind of just pulled the dog away. The dog didn't want to leave. And she told this to Monsignor's friend or Monsieur's friend. And uh, they were like, oh, can you show us the place? So the lady is like, yeah, 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 of course I can show you the place. So she takes them to the forest and shows them where it is. But when they arrive, Oh my god, I'm so sorry. When they arrive, the police is already there. They're putting up these like tapes and, you know, do not cross. And then says that this is a crime scene. They have found a body. So on the Sunday, when the police finds Monsieur, Ake actually asks everyone to leave his apartment. He wants Felicia and Tuva to leave. I don't know if Rocky left, but I know that Felicia and Tuva wasn't allowed to stay there anymore, which I can totally understand. I mean, I hate having people that's gonna sleep at my place. I just find it to be so awkward. And especially if they kind of, I like to have like friends to stay over like a weekend or so, that's fine. But to have someone stay over all the time, I'm like, hey, please leave. I love my alone time. It's just like the best. Tuve goes home to her place and Felicia, where is she supposed to go? So she ends up calling her mother and says that she is not really feeling well. So her mother pays for um, train tickets so that she can come home to her mother. So the train doesn't go until the next day. So this is on Monday the 10th. When she arrives to her mother's house, she tells her everything that's been going on. She tells her the entire story. Her mother talks to her and says, you need to turn yourself in. They turn Felicia into the police on September 10th. The next day, Ake actually turns, turns himself in to the police. So this is on September 11th. So when Ake turns himself in, the police gets notice of this entire situation. So they end up getting Rocky and Tuve in custody as well. The big question here is, who stabbed Monsieur? Of course, everyone is gonna look at Ake, and I'll say this, I thought that he was super credible, but um, I think that he did it. You know, we talked about the fact that he did wear a knife on the first robbery. Is it called a robbery if you don't enter someone's home? I'm not really sure, but he was wearing a knife at that time. Um, I find it super strange that he never heard anything about a knife, and then the other guys did it. Of course, they could have chatted with each other and made this pact, but I find it to be very, very unlikely due to all of the information that's out there and a lot of the DNA traces. Like, 
there were a lot of things that I just didn't cover, but when the police arrested Ake, he said that this was an accident. He thought that he had killed him, that he had beaten him to death, and he knew nothing about a knife. But he did have a blood on him after this attack. Now, none of the people actually saw him stab Monsieur, but they did notice that he had blood on, um, like a little bit on his shirt and then a little bit on his pants. Rocky also had blood on him, but Aki had a lot of blood on him, uh, on his pants. He did have a little bit, as he said, on his shirt. I think that that was his own blood because he was actually bleeding or having a nosebleed, but um, he did have blood on his his pants and the pants has never been found again so it is possible that he kind of maybe set fire on them or something everything points to Ake being the the one that killed him the trial kind of focused on who is responsible for his death of course everyone has a part in this but I mean it was planned that they were just gonna rob them so I mean I wouldn't put that much blame on anyone else than the person that did stab him. In January 2014, the sentence and the trial and everything was done. The court said that Ake was the sole responsible of Monsieur's death and he got sent away for 18 years, one year for each stab. In Sweden, it's a lot. I know that it doesn't sound a lot depending on where you're coming from, but life in Sweden is usually around 16 years. So 18 years is kind of a lot. Ake had never pre previously been in contact with the police or anything. He, w he had no previous record or anything. So in my personal opinion, I think it's possible that this was something that just went out of hand. I think that he never meant to kill this guy, but he did. And that's very, very unfortunate because he did end up taking a life. I'm very happy that he feels bad about it because there's so many killers out there that just doesn't really feel bad about it so that's something that makes me happy or whatever and then rocky got sentenced to five and a half half years for robbery Tove, which was 15 at the time, she was now 16. She cannot get jail until she is 18 years old. So that's kind of the law here in Sweden. You cannot get prison until you are 18 years old. That was never gonna happen for her, but she got sentenced to juvenile. And then Felicia got sentenced for one and a half years. I did come across a little text that Felicia had written on flashback which is sort of like the Swedish reddit I would say and uh, she said that Aki feels really bad about this and everything got got, got out of hand and that we shouldn't judge him and x y and c I don't agree with what she said I agree that it went out of hand but she needs to realize that he took another guy's life this guy was 31 years old He's never getting his life back. Ake was 26 years old when he got sentenced and with good behavior, he can get out. He doesn't need to serve all his time and he will still have a life when he gets out. So I think you need to put that in perspective. But that's this case video, This that's this case. Please, 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 as always, share this video if you want to, like it, dislike it if you did not enjoy it. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new here, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!